Alan. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Alan. And Alan. I seen that. So, Rin, me and you were going to do Hereditary originally. We yeah. talked about it and we were gonna we were gonna go through that and we both were kind of like, eh, everything's been said about Hereditary. I don't know. If, is there anything you want to add real quick? What's your your elevator pitch for Hereditary if you're going to sell somebody? Elevator before? pitch? Yeah. If I had to sell somebody, I'd say, I'll say this. Hereditary so far is my favorite movie of the year. We're sitting in August, end oh, of wow. August. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it a lot. I like horror. I, I hate little children. So, you know, <laughs> okay. it's a perfect mix of things that I, I like to see happen on screen yeah if you haven't I, seen it go see it uh, but yeah you're right everything has been said about it so what did what did you tell me to watch instead alan you well you instead just of, came out with a video on need for speed yeah. video games and i was like oh this will be perfect need for speed the movie best movie of 2014 i believe nothing better came out yeah um no it is garbage it, give me uh tell us what's what's it about what's the movie about give us the uh <sighs> so we're all up to speed yeah, yeah. we need to be up we need to speed we need to be up to speed we need yeah up yeah uh it is well okay so the premise of the movie the idea of the movie is it, to be as close to a video game as possible and that really ruins this this movie because anytime there's a struggle, like when they have to build the car, they just cut over that. Because that's what you do in a video game. And it's more natural in a video game because you want to get to the parts you actually play. Yeah. But they do that a lot in this. But you have uh, Aaron Paul, who just getting off of Breaking Bad. Hot off Breaking Bad. Hot off Breaking Bad. I, I think yeah. uh, this was coming out that summer that that ended, isn't it? Or was that pretty? Was Bre- it was close. It was really close, and um, I think it was a year after because Better Call Saul is in its fourth season. This okay, was four years ago. Yeah, and yeah, I think a year. His dad died, leaving him the garage, the mechanic shop. And so they're sad and touching. <laughs> they're struggling for money, and then a professional racer who is Aaron Paul's enemy, who is played by Dominic. Cooper, which is, he's uh, is, he's Howard. Is he Irish? Uh, I don't know if he's Irish, but he's uh, he's he looks ha- Irish. He's Howard Stark in uh, the Winter Soldier, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. Greenwich, London, England is where he was raised, born and raised. Um, he he looked European for sure. Yeah, he looked Irish to me. And he had so much hair gel in his hair. Um, well, he had I, the, a recent style. I don't know if this this movie was sponsored by hair gel, but it definitely should have been. It was it, sponsored by McLaren, Mustang, which Ford, uh, Lamborghini, Ferrari, all the biggies. Yeah, yeah. So he he shows up and is like, "Hey, I want you to work and fix this Mustang that was." I think they said it was the last one <coughs> Ford and Shelby were gonna do together. But they never finished, and it was like this. So I expected it to be really old, but it looked like it was the 2014 model, which seemed a little strange to me. I'm not a car guy, really. Yeah. So I don't. All that stuff just goes right over. Yeah. The so they do it, and then they're gonna. He's gonna pay them like five hundred thousand dollars, or it's gonna be like seven hundred thousand dollars for how much they sell it. Then they are arguing back and forth about who's a better racer. And they the rich guy is like, you know what? If you beat me in a race, I will give you the other, the, the whole $2.7 million. If you don't, you give me your portion. <coughs> and they race. And the bad guy who's just all evil kills the good guy, Pete, who yeah. as soon as he came on screen... I was like, oh, they're gonna they're gonna kill this guy. The only reason why this this kid who is smiling nonstop and talking about dreams that he had of his best friend, you know, 
achieving his goals and all this stuff. I was like, visions, oh. <laughs> visions. So the only reason he's in here is to die. And I expected him to die in the first race. I, I mean, did too. I thought the race ending was so happy and everyone, I thought Aaron Paul or somebody was going to get sideswiped. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that doesn't happen. They, the guy murders him and then runs away. And then Aaron Paul gets arrested because no one can put Dominic Cooper at the scene. Yeah, so Pete becomes a mark on the street. Little little smear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his frosted tips were on point, though. He's looking, looking. I'll nice. be honest with you. Yeah. During that part, I was clipping my dog's toenails. Like oh. I missed the Guy Fieri frosted tips, <laughs> but I, I'll take your word for it. But uh, yeah, so Aaron Paul goes to prison, and they again, just like a video game, just skip over it. They say. Yeah, three, three years, years later. later. <laughs> and it's like, okay, they, they're they just trying to get back to the action scenes, but they're skipping over things that would give you uh, a bad image of the hero. And this that kind of reminded me of Ready Player One, where they didn't want to have any negative um, association, any negative feelings associated with your main character. So anytime there would be a struggle or something they would have to work hard at, they just skipped over and got into the things that they were expert at. And it's so boring. There's no depth to his character. But for <sighs> this this movie is awful. He calls the Let guy this. He calls the guy who bought the Mustang for two point seven million dollars and is like, Hey, let me drive your Mustang. And the guy's like, Why? What's in it for me? And he says, like, two million dollars? I think he says, right? And I was like, isn't that less than he paid for the Mustang? Which they totally destroy. They never treat it like it's worth $2.7 million. They're like, he's sitting on the hood of the car at one point and like weaving in and out of traffic and doing all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, that's you, not You got to show off the Stang. That's it's true. Hot, hot, hot racing car. <laughs> my my buddy, uh, he, he has a, a shop in California where he fixes cars and I want to say it's a, a million dollar truck that he works on. And he says, if there's a scratch on that truck, it costs $10,000 just to fix up the paint job. Just for a mm. little, like a little tiny scratch. So every time they're doing something like this, I was like, oh, that's, that's a lot of money. That's going to be, that's not going to be easy to fix. But then the movie turns into a cross country road trip where they're constantly. Need for speed, the run. Is that. That's. There, there was a very there was a Need for Speed game a few years ago that had a very similar plot where the okay. guy had to race from L.A. to New York. Okay. And uh, but he was going to win twenty five million dollars, and he had to do it to pay off the mob. Ah, the mob. It was like five hundred racers start New York, and one ends that, or one ends in New York. That's a better premise than this because he's just trying to get attention so he can get into a race and get to California so he could be in well, a race. But they, they, spend... they tried to cram a lot into the movie because yeah. he does he goes cross country to get to the race. Yeah. And by the time he starts the race, they've done everything Need for Speed can possibly do, which mm -hmm. is go fast and crash. Yeah. And, and whiz. They spend 45 minutes or so just on them driving cross country. Like almost the whole movie is just that trip. It should have just been the trip. Yeah. Uh, because you could have ended it. They die when they yeah. get there. Dominic Cooper just murders them as soon as they show up. Fade to black after that truck hits them in in California. And they just bleed to death on the road. No, it should have been like a, a full-on race, just like in the other game. <clears throat> yeah, no, for sure. But I think they wanted to cram <coughs> too much into it. Yeah. Because it kind of felt like it had two climaxes, which is not what you want. No. But I will say this. You're right. Though the movie is a trash fire, <laughs> the the dialogue is terrible. Oh yeah, uh, the the characters are paper thin. It's it's a terrible script. But the, I came into this expecting one thing, and I got it, which was just good car, good car races, good good smashes, and that's really it. That's all you can expect from this. But I was actually surprised by the movie. That it was better um, than you expected? It was way better than I thought it could possibly be. Because they 
they did a lot of it practically and they did a lot of their own stunts yeah i think like, everything for the most part was practical elliot for mr robot is in this movie and he's, yeah rami malek malik rami malik yeah malik and he's on top of a truck that's going 70 miles per hour and he's trying to fuel up aaron paul's car as they're moving on the freeway and then the other chick has to get out of the car and she's dangling out the window and it's her it's the actress yeah what's her name emojin uh, poots yeah emojin what name is that like what is that that's a that's a that's an interesting choice i like yeah, a lot of europeans i'd have my wife mode would be not happy if i suggested emojin for our daughter. it's a name yeah it's <laughs> uh yeah. i I had a problem with that fuel up scene, though. No, there's no problems with it. You're wrong. No, Let's move here. on. And they go on. So that Mustang, right? They're going nonstop. They're like, we only have 44, 45 hours to get from New York to L.A. We can't, you know, we can't stop. We can't do anything. Whatever. We need this yeah. car because it's so fast and all this stuff. Yeah. That fill up scene was in the pickup truck that was massive. So no way it's yep. going as fast as the uh, the Mustang. It's souped up, baby. But they Chop keep shopped. they keep up with the Mustang the entire time. Hang on, not they, only that, not only do they keep up with them. the Mustang, but they beat them to San Francisco. They yeah. beat Aaron Paul. <laughs> yeah. To how does Fran. that? How does any of that work? Is there like a uh, just they pick him up in a, uh, an airplane and fly him? It's entirely possible. They had a guy, they had a rapper following them in a helicopter through the whole movie. So, whoa, man. That, that was Kid Cuddy. Yeah, Kid Cuddy. The comic relief. He uh, it, it follows the uh uh the Fast and Furious formula of having a Is that guy a rapper or is he an actor? In Kid Fast Cuddy? And Furious? Oh, uh, no, no, uh Tyrese. His name? Is he a rapper? He he might have been. He was an actor, though. I think he's more known as an actor, but Ludacris is definitely a rapper. Yeah, John. yeah, yeah. That's who I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ludacris. Ludacris, and then the other guy. There's Ja the Rule was in the first one, too. And there's also a little Bow Wow who was in the third one. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, he was in Like Mike. Like Mike, yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. But the comic Kid Cudi didn't cut it i thought he needed to uh he, he had amazing teeth spectacular mouth <laughs> i didn't him. i didn't notice but I'll, I'll take your word for it i i was stunned by his teeth every time he opened like uh steve harvey level of teeth like just magnificent yeah uh magnificent well i thought it was funny white that walls because aaron paul is kind of short he's like five eight and so yeah. everyone they hired was small to so it didn't so he wasn't like physically imposed by everyone else like it seemed to make it seem like he's a normal not normal but like it like he, <clears throat> they they also hire people who are smaller than him to make him seem bigger than life right i mean it's a pretty common thing like with tom cruise everyone is short so he doesn't yeah. seem so short uh except everybody looked like jockeys like horse racing jockeys Everyone, like you could tell everyone was so small, like their frames were small, but they're like walking around like they're tiny. super tough guys. And I was like, oh, this fit doesn't car. fit. Oh, is that what it is? Those it's like, yeah, it's just like you said, jockeys. You get you get short guys to ride the horse. You, you get these people have just been sat in the car their whole life. So they don't grow. Oh, they it's just, like it's like shoe binding. It's, it's actually stunt Feet, casting foot that you missed out on. Foot what? Binding? Shoe binding. What do they do in China? Oh, where they break your bones and stuff? Well, yeah, they keep your feet in small shoes so you look like you have dainty feet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah, exactly. But with like cars. That. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got gotcha. you. I'll follow on. That's it. Uh, I mean... This movie's bad. On. This movie's bad. There's not really... It is bad. ...anything worth talking about. But what I wa was curious... I disagree. ...was your I opinion about the games. You want to talk about your video a little bit? Unless I, I'm not else. a huge, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not a huge Need for Speed fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I flubbed that one, but we'll leave it in. So, I've played eighty percent of all the games. Okay, 
And this actually, it stuck. It felt like the game. It gives you everything you would want out of a Need for Speed movie. Yeah. Like, specifically, cop chases, the the sexy cars, and this movie was produced by EA, and they actually got the sound effects from the game and put it in the movie. Okay. And it, they were identical. Really loud engines and like. If you listen closely, sometimes you can hear like a, a lion roar or an elephant. They they mix in animal noises to make okay. the engines feel more imposing and and bassy. So they got the sound down perfectly, and they even went as far as making the crashes in the movie look like they look in the game. Yeah, which is really odd. Like these cars, I say I mentioned it in my video, and Need for Speed in the crashes. The cars never maintain more than just surface level damage. And they're yeah. going like 250 down a bridge. And little uh, <laughs> Pete gets rear-ended. And his car's flipping like crazy down the down the road. And it maintains perfect structural integrity. And it's flipping <laughs> just like in the game. It's going out of its way to hit uh, a pole on the bridge. And uh, just flip after flip. And I thought that was... That was entertaining. I thought that was interesting. They stayed true to the game really well. I would even actually go as far to say that this movie, I think, is the best video game movie out there. And I've seen all of them. It's not saying much. <laughs> it's actually not saying anything. Um, um, but I, I Did you see this is Tomb Raider? One. I didn't see it. Yeah, I did. Not good? I did. Tomb Raider is just average. Okay. Just boring plain predictable the action in it is not spectacular it's just okay because that the villain at the end got got fingered and that was funny <laughs> but uh, the movie was just so bland yeah and it was also a little bit little bit marketed towards chinese audiences yeah they got a, a chinese actor and there was a scene where they had to go to japan to get something or they had to go to the they had to go to an island that was next to japan mm -hmm. so to get to that island she had to go to a guy who owns boats and of course that guy is in china because china is i guess closer to that island than japan is even though they're like we got to go to the japanese island smash cut to china like, what <laughs> so but that movie was really boring this did have the the surprise factor with the low expectations. Yeah. Um, I do think, though, that if they worked harder on the characters uh -huh. and the dialogue, especially the dialogue, that this movie could have actually been great because they got the action down. Yeah, the action the was, was good. Uh, yeah. The, the characters were garbage. They, If they if they made Aaron Paul uh, not more evil, but like more complex and made... Likeable. He doesn't even need, you don't need character. He just needs to be likable. Yeah. Because we're not going, we're just going for good action. But if we can have like a little, a buddy go along with, with us, that would be. Well, what'd you think of the romance? Because they, they, they tried that and it is not, <laughs> did not feel authentic. It could have worked, but. Well, yeah. I had a big problem with her. They, in the beginning, she shows up and she's like, why is this car fast? Is 900 hundred horsepower a lot? Like asking all these like really basic questions. And then she's like, can I see the engine? And they pop it open. And then she's like, lists off everything that's in there. She's like, oh, that's actually really impressive. And they're like, yeah, shocked. I thought and then, and then she's like, oh, you thought because I'm a woman, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like, no, because you yeah. acted like an idiot when you first showed up that they thought you didn't know what you're talking about. They're talking to you like an equal at first. And then you're like, oh, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. And then shocking. I know everything. You guys are. Here's what sexist. that was supposed to be. That was supposed to be the scene where she shows up and pretends. I don't know nothing about nothing. And then they go, huh, you're just some some dumb little thing that doesn't know nothing. And then she gets in the car and pulls off like some sick moves. A and then they go, whoa, you're awesome. And then she's like, yeah, whatever. And I thought they were going to go with that. You know mm -hmm. how they do that? Yeah, yeah. In movies. I think they tried. Yeah. But it didn't work. It f failed pretty hard. Well, they what they should have done 
is had her come up and ask questions and have Rami Malik or Malik's character just assume she doesn't know anything. Don't have her come out and pretend she doesn't know anything. Just have him yeah, assume. And then she could be like, oh, that's this and this and that. He looks dumb. Aaron Paul's impressed. And she's not just a liar, you know, because that's all it was. She was like, oh, you guys are sexist because you believe the things I said before. And it's like, no, no, that's not how it works. Let them be sexist. Let them be, you know, ignorant and then prove that that's not the case. And that would have been fine, but it's just dumb. I also, I really liked the, um, it's off topic, but I liked the, the, they had like these first person angles when Aaron Paul was driving. Yeah. And uh, like the car was going fast and mm-hmm. you, you're into oncoming traffic. It puts you right in there. And um, I thought that was great. And they even, they even like had a car crash from that angle. I, I, this movie had so much potential, and I think the actors felt that because I felt like nobody was phoning it in. Yeah, everybody was trying. Rami Malek, he's an incredibly great actor. Yes, very good. We also he had Michael Keaton in this. Michael, Who's... they got they hired Michael Keaton to sit in a chair for a day and film him. Yeah, and and even that, even you can tell that he he was probably on set for two days max. Yeah, he I... didn't phone it in. He, 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 he was, was probably on fun. set for two hours. I think he, they sent him his script. He read it in the car on the way over and then just knocked yeah. it out of the park. Because they had him but do he didn't, nothing. <laughs> like, he did it, a good job, but they used yeah. him hardly at all. That's what I'm saying. If this movie had a better script, it would have, it, it, I think it would have been the first movie people would have gone, oh my God, we can do video game movies now. If they had good characters, yeah, not even good, not even good characters, just fun characters. Yeah, show like, struggle. We don't need depth, but we need we need somebody to care about and latch on to. And the dialogue, the dialogue was very <laughs> bad. Well, like I was annoyed from the beginning when they skipped over the car making stuff, because like that could have been interesting. Have like a five minute montage of them working on getting the car together, scraping by, getting everything as best they can. And then yeah. ha- show Aaron Paul in prison for a little bit, like not even a long time, but they they give them these consequences of their actions. And then they're just like, don't worry about it. Everything worked out. There's like Having no struggle in prison. Yeah. Like there was no, no issues for them. Like the, the only conflict was him doing the thing that he was capable of doing. He knew he was capable of doing it the entire time. All his friends knew that he was capable of doing it the entire time. The villain was afraid because he knew he was yep. capable of doing it the entire time. And so it was just like yep. this weird style of movies that come out now where they don't want they want you to pretend you're that person who is just capable and that there's no issues. And it's that, you know, everyone gets a trophy mentality where it's just like, no, don't don't worry about the hard stuff. You're already good enough. You you just need the opportunity. Once someone gives you the opportunity, you can show the world how special you are. And that's so boring. It's so lazy and dumb. And I, it just makes me mad. I think it's just lazy. And yeah. people <clears throat> have come to accept it a little bit more these days, especially with foreign audiences who aren't as versed in movies yeah they don't really know what else to compare it to and it is you do need the the hero's struggle you need to Mm -hmm. have you need to see him at the bottom of the barrel and then climb to the top yeah he should have been the one to kill pete i I, thought he would accidentally wind up killing somebody yeah that he would have to make up for it but instead it was the villain which this movie didn't even need a villain no. It just needed him to race across, like, just just do it. Copy the game. It's the mob. He needs to pay the mob. Yeah. Just and and it give him the the spicy little blonde piece to go alongside him, <laughs> and 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 there's your movie. You develop character in the car. Maybe have a a goofy cop that's trying to chase him down, like Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, God, I don't know. You know, you could like constantly cut to a. A guy behind a desk 
trying to catch him, trying yeah, to like, yeah. get the satellites configured and going, oh, damn, he's so fast. The satellites can't <laughs> even keep up. Well, I, I think you know? they were just trying to keep it close to the video game. They, they like, were, and it, they, they did succeed. They cut out but, anything that wouldn't be in a game. Like they had a that's few a problem, cut though, scenes. We're not playing a game. We're watching yeah. a movie. Yeah. No, for sure. The game. You look over it when you play a game because it's interactive. The cut yeah. scenes are the things that slow it down. You're like, all right, I just want to get back to playing. That's why I'm doing this. I don't want. I don't want an extended cut scene. I want to. I want to play the game. Yeah, when especially in Need for Speed, you don't want that. Yeah. Well, when you're yeah. watching a movie, you, there's no interaction. And so skipping over exposition, skipping over things that would be important to the story to show what would be the video game part, it's like, no, no, you, you're missing the whole point. Like, this should be that that stuff, the car racing stuff, that's like the icing on the cake, but you have to have the cake first. Otherwise, it's, yeah. just, it's just too much. No, I agree. I mean, this movie is not really all that defensible. I recognize fully that it's terrible and from a writing perspective pretty much pretty much uh <laughs> fails on every level yeah but i actually had fun with it i yeah. was it wasn't as bad as i expected surprised. for sure yeah i think part of the issue is you go need for speed why would i watch that yeah and uh, seeing it seeing all the missed potential it could it really could have been something i yeah. think well, you in your video you talked about uh, burnout a lot, and that yeah. would be a great video game movie, just like a over the top crazy, you know, like almost like Death Race two thousand type of thing where people are just smashing into each other for an entire movie. I would love. Yeah, that. you, you a rated R, violent movie where somebody rams somebody off the road and you see in slow motion like in. Uh, death proof the car yeah. getting smushed you see the body inside the car getting <laughs> just demolished um just like this high high level viscera and yeah that would actually be fun but uh, burnout has never had a story so i guess in terms of that you could go wherever you wanted with it yeah. you could create any type of character there's no limits really just a bunch of people high on cocaine yeah trying That's... to just go fast <laughs> yeah just cocaine and adderall and just slamming in with people into each other because like, like then you could ninja. then you could it like, would make way more sense when the characters like in this movie hits the shopping cart of the homeless guy and they laugh about oh it. yeah they're like ah like wait yeah. no you you guys are acting like this is a real world you should feel bad I, and, I like how the homeless guy goes, hey, man, that's my house. <laughs> After they run it over. <laughs> but like if it was a over the top crazy where people just didn't care, where there was no like intentional heart behind anything, you'd be like yeah. way more on board with it. You could even just run the homeless guy over and it wouldn't nearly, yeah. it wouldn't matter nearly as much as it did in this movie Need for Speed with them just hitting the shopping cart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like. That's you're you're bordering on Grand Theft Auto, but yeah, I get you. Yeah, running over homeless for kicks. <laughs> but I mean, like in this movie where they took it serious, like it was more grounded in reality. Hitting that homeless that, guy's cart should have been upsetting. If that's the, another thing. Oh, sorry, keep going. I was just gonna say, if the movie was crazy and everyone's like on drugs and you know killing each other anyways, then it wouldn't matter as much as the cart in this, in, opposed to something like that. That's all. At a certain point in this movie, I thought it would have benefited a lot from being self-aware. Yeah. If it, because you could have kept the characters pretty much as they are, but have the movie itself be a character and have it sort of poking, poking fun yeah. at itself. That that could have worked too, but it didn't. No, they were very earnest about everything. Yeah. I think too they were even so. playing Need for Speed at one point. Really? In the garage, yeah, in the beginning. I think that right surprised me. When the the villain shows up to offer him the opportunity, they're all sitting around playing Need for Speed. And I was like, Oh, that's weird. Okay, that's awful. Yeah. 
But uh, and then ev- everyone in the theater goes, oh, "That's the game this movie is based on." <laughs> um, I do have a problem with you saying this is the best video game movie. Okay, let's hear it. Because I, I'll give you that this isn't quite a video game movie, but Jumanji, the second oh. one, I think that Ooh. does video game the best. Ooh, okay. Now it's not it's not based on a video game, but they use the concepts from a video game in a movie. I think one of the I, best I thought they they didn't do that very well at all. No, no, but you don't play like current games, right? No, I just played <laughs> what was it? Super Mario sixty four. That's my my jam. Okay, you always bring up <laughs> Mario sixty four, but like Jumanji's concept was fine, but mm-hmm. I don't think they did enough with it it, it yeah. was such a bland movie in terms of just a to b bad guy let's go get him we each have three lives we each have a strength and a weakness the strength and weaknesses were very on the nose very very like predictable yeah like that... kevin hart's weak to cake okay you know he's gonna see a cake and die yeah right? whatever um i i was like what would happen in that world when they run into a glitch like that would have been an interesting scene how, do, how can you like manipulate the AI of the game? What if you saw the game's code and you were able to use that as an advantage? Mm-hmm. Like there were so many things that could have just shook up the story a little bit. Yeah. But I guess you're not wrong. Cause I can't think of another movie that was like based in video games that, that does it well. Cause Ready Player One flopped. Oh, they had Ready no understanding of how video game or video game culture worked. But yeah. Jumanji just sort of used it as the backdrop, and it didn't. It wasn't disrespectful like Ready Player One, but yeah, well, it also anytime, wasn't interesting. Anytime Jumanji used video game uh, rules to progress it's, the story, it didn't make any sense. But it, it, it was always basic too for like yeah. a general audience. The other, They're like, oh. He's an NPC. <laughs> the okay. one of my gripes with the Jumanji, after saying that I think it's the best one, is uh, it was a five-player video game, and you needed all five people to play, and that's not a thing. What what video game? Like, could you imagine if you played that by yourself and you accidentally became Kevin Hart and you're the only that's one? That's what happened to the kid. Oh, never mind. It changed. It, hey, wait. When the kid went in, it was a single-player game. He went in on his own. The, the he, guy who yeah, Nick, but Nick he, Jonas. He got stuck. He couldn't get past because he couldn't steal the helicopter. So you need You need all players. five it's, people to play, yeah. But the, like there's evolve. only four ports on the game. Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> classic movie. Uh, yeah. I guess that's all I can tell you. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I think that does it one of the better ways that takes like this is a video game. You feel like you're watching a video game and it feels like a purpose. A similar to like Wreck-It Ralph. I think Wreck-It Ralph takes the video game stuff and turn it into a movie really, really well. Whereas when you take a video game and you try to tell a, a narrative in that world, it falls apart because the narratives are controlled by you when you play the game and it's just a lot harder to keep it going. I guess I, I wasn't really too impressed with Wreck It Ralph. Really? I thought Wreck It Ralph yeah, was great. Yeah. I thought it was okay. I was expecting more creativity from mm. the video game standpoint, but like I said, it's like kind of made for a general audience sort of thing, not Yeah. And I'm 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 a rather hardcore gamer. Any ladies listening, I have over half a million gamer score. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. a lot. That is a so, lot. So you know, sometimes they feel like they're pandering a little bit or when they have to explain what an NPC is to grandma and yeah. I already know what that is. It's like, this is, I don't. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. But as far as franchises go, video game franchises turned into, into movies. Mm-hmm. I think this one is the best one. Does that mean anything? No. <laughs> Resident Evil is better than this. The first Resident Evil. I'll take that over Need for Speed. Yeah, that. I think this is. I haven't seen the first one in so long. 
so I don't know. But I think this this was definitely more fun. It was true to the game to a fault. Yeah. Um, but again, just the fact that they went practical with it, like yeah, they they hooked up a car to a helicopter and they put actors in that car and they had the helicopter going over the Grand Canyon with the car underneath it, and they actually did it. And yeah. They had the actors doing their own stunts. Wait. I would venture to guess that Aaron Paul did a good handful of his own driving. Well, yeah, there's that one scene where he um, yeah. skids into the camera. Like, he's, like, inches away yeah. from the camera. That was yeah. all him, all one shot. Like, it's it's really impressive what they were able to do with yeah. the action. But it The also, dedication to that was great. It also feels really tame when you compare it to something like Fast and the Furious, that series. Because this came out when number six had just come out. Yes, six. And... uh they go a lot bigger in Fast and the Furious. And I know they were trying to keep this more grounded to reality, but Fast and the Furious is just a lot more fun. Like, I agree to an extent. I think that sometimes when the cars aren't on screen, those movies can be really dull, especially oh, the yeah. fifth Fast and Furious. Mm-hmm. But as they keep going and the writing gets worse and they become less self-aware... It, the movies get more and more unintentionally funny, and yeah. then you have some really good action to hang on to that. So, like around number six, six is okay, but once, I, I think they were banking once, on this to be its own Need for Speed franchise. Yeah, I think like, so. A big name, because I I think the actors knew that too. I think that's why they're all trying. Like Aaron Paul had some tears coming out. That little. Uh, emojin dragons she she was giving it all she had so why did aaron paul not just take the uh the car to the cops like he's (laughs) like instead of racing yeah that's actually a really great point the most important thing is to get retribution for pete but i'm gonna risk destroying the only piece of evidence in this race because if he crashed or he bumped someone, like all the evidence is gone, isn't it? I mean, I guess they're like, oh, yeah. just that the car exists proves that he was there, but that's crazy. Like, <sighs> that's why I'm like, he also held on to the car for years or hit it. Yeah, like, he didn't. He didn't get it. He didn't hire somebody to fix it up. Yeah, I know the car's the illegal, color. but you're telling me he doesn't know anybody in that business in that criminal life that can come give him a new bumper. He got, I mean, he got the cars in the first place. So whoever yeah. got him the cars could have definitely hooked him up with someone with a, a can of spray paint. Yep. Yeah, it was dumb. The whole thing. <laughs> no, that's why I'm saying they didn't even need a villain. It should have just been him. Yeah, just n- faceless racers. They didn't need to be a yeah. personal connection. That's, that, maybe, that, maybe he gets like a little rivalry at a gas station with one of them. You know, like like mm-hmm. for a, for like half a chapter of the movie, like the guy says something mean and he bullies him a little bit. You know, just have like a little something. Yeah. Christ. Yeah, it should have yeah. just been Pixar's planes. Maybe not. <laughs> oh man, this movie. I uh, I don't recommend it. It's not one I would say you should watch. In all honesty, I would recommend it, but as soon as people start talking, just skip it. Just fast and go forward. to the go to the big big rooms and zooms. <laughs> well, yeah, like the anytime he was driving around town, like jumping over cars or weaving in and out of traffic, I just yeah. felt bad for the world. Like it wasn't. He was like making other pedestrians crash or like just <laughs> yeah. ruining people's day. And it's just like, oh no, this seems because they would cut in, like they cut into the the bus full of kids. Like they're, yeah, like, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> they're giving you their perspective of this horrible event. And you're just supposed to forget about that. And it's like, oh, no, you guys, you need to make all of them like they don't exist. Otherwise, yeah, well, your main character seems like a jerk. That or was actually the moment yeah. when I thought that this should have been self-aware because I imagined Aaron Paul or somebody murders another racer right in front of all these kids in a school bus. 
Why there's a school bus in the middle of the woods, it, I have no clue, but it doesn't matter because it's Need for Speed, baby. <laughs> if once once the, the guy crashes into the tree and explodes and dies and he's on fire and he's sc- screaming, the kids all in the, it should have panned back over to the kids in the bus and they should have all cheered. Like, yeah. <laughs> like that would have been a nice little like self-aware <clears throat> moment. Yeah. But or nah, I- it's just like, here you go, kids. Get, remember this. Another another thing, uh, the whole thing Aaron Paul was saying is like you never leave a racer behind. Like if he crashes, you always turn back. You always go back and help. Like you don't just leave no. him there. And that was he left his, them all behind. <laughs> that was his complaint with Pete dying. Right, the guy didn't turn back. No, not his complaint wasn't you straight up murdered him. It was like you just left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but throughout the race, when it gets down to the last three guys. The the villain Dominic does the exact same move. He you know bumps his bump or bumps the it's a pit yeah. maneuver like the police do right. He yeah he bumps him, spins him around. The guy flips over and you know crashes. Aaron Paul sees it and just keeps driving, and he doesn't stop until Dominic crashes. But it's like, what happened to the whole? You always turn back. You always cut it up. It's like ah, we don't know those guys. It doesn't matter. It's just so inconsistent. Yeah, it is. Um, he made himself the villain for that for that third racer. He did the exact same thing that Dominic did to Pete. And that right then should have proven him guilty, in all honesty. That Dominic but, was guilty? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's done the same thing. He's clearly very, very good at it. <laughs> he's at hitting practicing. Cars. Yeah. But yeah, I think, uh, is that it? I think so. I don't think there's anything else to say about this movie. It's a terrible movie. Mm. I loved it. You loved it? Um, no, I didn't love it. Okay. I I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll never watch it again. Um, I don't care to. I, I was surprised by its quality. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, watch some, some driving scenes on uh, YouTube. I'm sure they're up there. Yeah, watch Fast and the Furious and Mr. Robot, and you'll get a better version of this movie. Mr. Robot's pretty great. Mr. Robot watch is Mr. fantastic. Robot. But uh, yeah, also check out Rin's video on Need for Speed and why the genre died. Is that fair to say? Why? Uh, Not a, Need for Speed. More I like, guess. like a subset of the genre died. Yeah. A very specific subset that I I miss very much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you didn't mention in your video, but I'll say it to you now. I think arcades not being as big of a thing anymore is a big part of that. That could, it could be. You know, because like, Cause those, yeah, Burnout was a perfect arcade game, like an actual you go and you play in the seat that bumps and shakes and stuff, or whatever. Yeah. But I think people on a console would rather play something like Gran Turismo, where they spend time and build up and progress in that yeah. way. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those. Me, yeah, me either. But I don't really. Yeah. I'm all about that Mario 64, man. That's where that's where yeah. it's at. <laughs> Great driving mechanics, perfect camera angles in that game. Yeah, yeah. But beautiful I, paintings. How can people find you, Ren? Oh, type in uh, Ren's reviews. That's Ren with two N's. Your favorite little boy in the whole wide world, and uh, you can't miss it. It's me, Ren's reviews. One word. But I've also branded myself really well. So if you misspell it or type in, uh, type it in as two words, you'll find me. Don't worry, kids. I'm there. Rin is short for Rinderman, right? It's not short for anything. It's it's long for Rin. Oh, okay. Like after Rin and Stimpy? No, that no. Mine's longer than his because it's got an extra N. Yeah, that's what you said. It's long for Rin. Yeah. So Rin with one N would be just Rin, but long for Rin would be with two Ns. Yeah, that, that one's me. <laughs> well, thanks for doing this, Ren. I appreciate it. It's a good time. Always. Also, everybody go watch Hereditary. It's it's very, it's great. Yeah, it's not that good, but, you know, I don't like horror movies, so I was kind of disappointed in it, actually. Okay. That's fine. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Ren. I'm sorry. Watch it and see for yourself. <laughs> but I we, guess. 
Taylor and I will be back in a couple of days with uh what is that movie called? It was not good. Fast and Furious? No, we're recording that today. But the movie okay. that's coming out. Oh, here's my list. Finally, before I fall. Before I fall should be coming out this weekend. Is it's that, not good. Is that a drama? What is that? It's about this girl who dies, but she keeps reliving her last day. And it's kind of like Groundhog's Day, but with death. And it's, it doesn't make any sense. So is, is it like Happy Death Day at all? I've never seen that, but I think so. Happy Death Day is more of a comedy than anything. This is like emo kid. Like you're going to. I don't even have any good references for that anymore. I okay. Say, I don't know. My Chemical Romance and write poetry. I don't know why you would watch that, but um, you watched it. So I guess that if you listen, you now the audience doesn't have to watch it. Yeah. You're just like nostalgia critic. It was uh, it was suggested by one of our, our viewers and we were upset oh, with that okay. person afterwards. Yeah. Viewers like to put put their their uh, creators through pain. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So that will be coming out this week. You can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod and uh, follow Rin everywhere you can find him. Yeah. Is that it? Are we going to, can I, can I end it? Can I do a cut? Yep. Yep. That's it. I'll, I'll see you guys at the finish line. Action.